Mummies had already been used in what we now call cannibal medicines for hundreds of years by the time Napoleon started the Egyptomania craze of the 18th and 19th centuries. And with every report of Napoleon's discoveries, folks fell more and more in love with the esoteric and the exotic, throwing parties and making mummy medicine popular again. Here's a quick look at Egyptomania and mummy madness. Let's dig into this. On January 15th, 1834, everyone who was anyone was at the Royal College of Surgeons for the event of this season. Renowned surgeon Thomas Pettigrew was unwrapping a mummy from the 21st dynasty, roughly around 1077 BC to 940 BC, and prim and proper Victorians could not wait to see what was under those wrappings. Mummies had been coveted for centuries, the ancient Greeks and Persians used the black pitch from mummies to treat broken bones. It makes sense in a simple kind of way. The pitch is bitumen, and in ancient Egypt it was used as a glue and a waterproofing material, and it was also used in the mummification process. During the Crusades, the medicinal properties of bitumen were brought back to Europe and expanded into all sorts of medicines. The idea that bodies could be preserved for centuries suggested they could contain magical healing properties and everything from headaches to epilepsy were treated with mummy. King Charles II of England used a concoction of mummy and alcohol called the King's Drops, and in 1679 a Franciscan monk came up with a recipe for mummy marmalade. It became so popular that the supply could not keep up with the demand. By the 15th century, fake mummies were being produced and sold as real. Mummy medicines were still being sold by catalog as late as 1924. And then Egyptomania exploded after Napoleon's Egyptian campaigns from 1798 to 1801 recorded Egyptian art and monuments for the very first time and discovered the mysterious Rosetta Stone. The reports about Egypt were exotic and mysterious and romantic, which fit right in with the Victorian fascination with death, spiritualism, mysticism, and the macabre. This was the era of Dracula and the picture of Dorian Gray, when cutting a lock of hair from a dead loved one and wearing it in a locket was common, the era of memento mori. The Egyptian aesthetic was irresistible. Home furnishing from lamps to sewing machines had Egyptian motifs. Fashion designers copied Egyptian designs as closely as the Victorian moral standards would allow. Reproductions of Egyptian jewelry were even more popular. Explorers, scientists, and rich collectors all flocked to Egypt and shipped items back to all parts of Europe for display in museums and private collections. Egyptian architecture was copied in buildings and in graves. The Egyptian Hall, originally built in Piccadilly, London in 1812 as a museum to hold Captain Cook's treasures from his adventures in the South Seas, was used as a theater by the mid-1800s with magic shows, plays, and seances, favorite pastimes in this era that embraced the unknown and the macabre with eerie entertainment. From May until October of 1851, the Great Exhibition of the Works of All Nations, which showcased over 100,000 displays from all over the world, fanned the public appetite for the new, the old, and the unusual. Giant statues of Ramses II, Sphinx, architectural columns, and art were all copied from originals and wowed visitors in the Egyptian court. And souvenirs could be bought so you could take home your own little piece of Egypt. The upper crust of London happily and proudly donned their finest to attend Egyptian-themed cocktail and dinner parties, and an invitation to a private mummy unwrapping, or a ticket to a public unwrapping, promised a magical evening. Women who wouldn't dare remove their gloves in public were fascinated by yards and yards of ancient bandages being unwound from thousands of year old mummies. 
And that brings us back to Surgeon Thomas Pettigrew, who pioneered the bizarre entertainment form and reportedly unwrapped more than 40 mummies personally. He would begin by sawing off part of the skull to show the brain had been removed. The wrappings would be unwound, layer by layer, and Pettigrew would comment on any grave goods like flowers or jewels found tucked into the bandages. As his finale, Pettigrew is said to hold the entire unwrapped mummy up as though it was standing next to him, and people loved it. Later unwrappings by Pettigrew and others added the bizarre practice of giving seeds found in the wrappings, or even in the mummy's hands, to important guests to plant. Mummy wheat, mummy peas, and mummy corn were reportedly grown from the supposedly ancient seeds of the pharaohs. The mummy shows in Cannibal of Medicine eventually faded in popularity as Howard Carter discovered the lost tomb of King Tutankhamun and the actual science and preservation of these incredible ancient artifacts became priority. Egyptomania, on the other hand, has continued with an explosion of Tutmania in the 1970s. Hey, here's another Dragon Den video you might like. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And you can hit the notification bell if you'd like to know when our videos come out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.